So a couple of weeks ago I was at a wedding. I'm not sure if I've told this story. I don't think I have. Uh, but I was at a wedding and uh, the reception was in a hotel. Uh, and the hotel car park is kind of shared by the town because of the location of the, of the hotel. Uh, it's a fairly popular car park also for those who want to go shopping in the locality. So I didn't know that before I got there. So I just arrived into this car park and saw that there was just there wasn't, there wasn't a space to be had, apart from one, one space in the back corner. Uh, so there was a car in front of me and I was just like, oh, I won't go around, go around, keep going around, keep going around. And lo and behold, flicks on the indicator and pulls in and parks. And I saw it was a friend of mine, actually, a guy named Noel. So I did six laps of the car park afterwards like, and found nothing. I had to leave the car park, go to Dunn's car park, and it was up in the north, so I had no sterling on me. I had to ask a lady, hello, how are you? Have you any sterling? I'll give you a euro. I, I will. I just, I have no sterling. I can't pay for it. And they said, oh, no, don't, don't worry, father. Don't worry, father. I'll, I'll take care of it. And I, so um, wonderfully generous people up there and all of that. But I was talking to Noel afterwards, and I met him inside in the hotel. I said, I said you got the last parking space in the hotel. And he said, yeah, I always, um, I always say a prayer to St. Anthony, even for, for those kind of things. And I was like, oh, give him the priest a lesson, are you? <laughs> and he was right. I was just, I, I was just thought, that's, I, I mean, I, I know I, I used to do that, and I, I've heard lots of people doing that, but I haven't done that in ages. I haven't done that in a good while, where for something as kind of harmless or almost useless as a parking space to actually pray. And it just really struck me how, it's, how, how wonderful it is to rely on God uh, for everything. The simplest of things, the biggest of things, the most important things, the, the, the most apparently unimportant things. But to live your life out of the hand of the Father and to rely on him for everything. And it was just a, just a reminder to me of how important this is. Yesterday we were talking about miracles and uh, this... Uh, somewhat maybe provocative statement that, that I made, that if, if it's a miracle you need, it's a miracle you'll get. Because I, as, as I said, I, I know a lot of us will have situations or know people or have family members who require miracles. There's no other way around it at the moment. Medically, the, the situation has gone too far or psychologically, the things are just too complicated or whatever it may be. There are just situations that haven't got any simple human solution. So then the only thing left is, is, is a miracle. But again, just, just to clarify, if it's a miracle, we absolutely need it. There's no other way, and this is for our ultimate good, i.e. heaven, then, then God will, will grant that miracle. If it's not for our ultimate good, as in if, something, if God has something else in mind that the, the cross or the illness can actually teach us, then he might leave us that cross for a, for, for a while. And, and eventually, we do have to leave earth. Eventually, like in our... What's the average age, um, life expectancy in Ireland? I think 82 now. Um, eventually, we have to go. So it's not that God has to grant a miracle to keep you alive. No, because I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds a bit callous or cold, but eventually we have to go. The, the goal of, of, of God's divine mind isn't that we stay on earth forever. So eventually, we have to leave anyway. So God will take us at the time that's best for our salvation. God will take us at the time that's best for our salvation. So, yes, there, there may be occasions, there are occasions when, when miracles are, are, are granted, absolutely, because God knows that we can, we can receive this miracle and it won't endanger our eternal salvation. Because at times, if we have a healthy body, that might make it actually even more capable, make me even more capable of sinning. You know, if you might pray, Lord, I wish I was bigger or stronger or more handsome or didn't get sunburned so easily or whatever it may be and you know and then I wish I was more richer more successful but then if you got these things it might make you just downright arrogant and proud and maybe you might realize oh wow I can actually seduce people and then marriage becomes a little less important and fun becomes a little more important and then lo and behold this grace you've been given of of an attractive body which can happen is actually leading you and others to sin. Well, it's better you don't have it. It's just better you don't have that gift. Our intelligence the same way. You can use your intelligence to manipulate people. You can use your intelligence to, to draw people to God. It's, it's a gift, but it depends on how you use it. So if you're praying, Lord, Lord, please grant me the, the gift of intelligence that I can remember, that I can study, the Lord won't give it to you if it's going to endanger your soul. He won't, because why would he? Why would you give your child a steak knife 
to play with, with his little brother, you know, four and five years of age. We want steak knives to play with, Daddy. We're going to play knights and swords and stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that this is what you want. Just this is going to end in a... It's going to end, as, as most parents would say, it's going to end in tears. In that case, it's going to end in severed limbs, probably. But uh, So God knows. God knows what miracles he can grant. But I think it's just... What a fantastic way of living life. Alert or awake to the daily miracles, the small, if you want to call them small miracles. That when we see the beauty of God's creation, certain, like this time of the year, thank God a lot of people are on holidays and out cycling and kayaking and hiking and camping and traveling, going to the beach and all this kind of thing. And you see just the beauty of God's creation. And like we don't have to say, well, you know, it's just... It's just tectonic plates moving and, you know, the sun spinning around the earth and, you know, this time of the year, we're just a bit closer, so um, it's just warmer. I mean, you can reduce it all to science, but how boring. Uh, what, what a miracle, like, that God gives us such, such beautiful creation. And then maybe more personally, you look at the people in your life. You look at, at you know, this beautiful husband, this, I'm oh, sorry, handsome husband, beautiful wife at your side, and you go, my goodness, who am I? Who am I to have this, this person in my life? You look at the miracle of life. Every little child that's born with these tiny little hands, with these little fingerine nails, and these little ears, and little eyebrows, and the whole lot, and there it all is in seven pounds of humanness in your hand. Like just a tiny, it's all there. <laughs> it's all there. So helpless and th there's a full human being from there to there like and it's just, just the miracle of it all they can live how they can live in water for nine months and then pop out and suddenly switch over from living underwater for nine months and then suddenly start breathing I mean, it's just it's just it's fascinating stuff just incredible like the miracle of life and then we do have actual miracles we could classify as miracles as well like supernatural interventions of god um I mentioned a few yesterday, but I think if, you, if, you're, if you're in prayer circles, very often we do hear these, these testimonies of people uh, who experienced a very clear intervention of God in their life. I mean, I can think now of, of uh, three ladies who could not, medically could not conceive, and they had all sorts, of, um, all sorts of medical issues that would have made conception impossible. Uh, endometriosis and all these various things, and they had the treatment for endometriosis, uh, which is painful enough in itself. And they said, look, we'll, this will aid uh, conception for the next six months. After that, you probably have to come back and get the laser surgery again. Six months elapses, still no child. And then a year later, four children back to back. <laughs> you know, like medical things, things that shouldn't have been possible medically, but, but they, they happened. Like the, the Lord, when he, when he works a miracle in someone's life, I think of, uh, again, like people who pass through our doors here, healed of cancer and arthritis and... Then you've got other miracles that maybe aren't as quite as clear, like conversions, like people who are just so hard of heart and so far from God. And through some person or a cross or some intervention of God directly in their heart going to Medjugorje or something, they come back and they're, they're a new person. Now, this is actually more important than a healing of cancer because healing of cancer, while that's good, you still have a soul to save. Whereas if God works directly in someone's life and, and heals their heart, heals their soul, that's, that, this is set up now for all eternity. This is a, a miracle that's setting a person on a trajectory towards heaven. Whereas healing of cancer, while it's good, don't get me wrong, uh, we still, we still, you still have a job to do. You still have to work on your soul or your body's healthy, good. But now that your body's healthy, what, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Now that you've got a healthy body, are you going to use it for God's glory or are you just going to use it like the world will say, squeeze as much pleasure out of life and then you die? So like, the daily miracles, the daily miracles that we're surrounded by. The, we'll be reading shortly now the Egyptians in the desert. They were hungry, understandably. They're in a desert. And so again, rather than praying to God, they blame him for bringing them out of Egypt into this place where there's, there's nothing. And they complain, they grumble against him and against Moses, rather than saying, Lord, you have been so good to us, you've been so faithful to us, we ask you now also to provide food. 
because we know that you wouldn't lead us out here to die. What would the point of that be? So, Lord, we, we trust in you and we trust in your providence. And so we kneel before you, you who are our great God, you who are our liberator, and we ask you for our daily bread, whatever it may be. But that's not what they did. <laughs> they grumbled against God. They grumbled against Moses. And God still works the miracle. And it's a daily miracle. It's a daily miracle, just like give us this day our daily bread, just like the Holy Communion that we receive at Mass. It's a daily miracle where this miraculous substance, uh, sweet as, as honey, appears on the ground in the morning with the, with the morning dew. And it can be harvested and it lasts for one day. So it must be eaten on that day. It will not last the following day. If people are trying to kind of, you know, some of the bigger boys maybe trying to store up a little so that they'll have a double portion for breakfast the following day, it would just go moldy. Like there'd be worms in it the following day. It did not last two days. It lasted one day. It's, like it's just a miracle. Except on the Sabbath day. The day before the Sabbath day, you could harvest twice as much and it would last that day and the Sabbath day. I know, well, it's the same stuff. Why isn't it going moldy on the Sabbath day? Well, it goes moldy every other day. It's, it's just a daily miracle. And even at that, they say, right, well, okay, that's nice, but do you remember back in Egypt we had, we had meat? Where's the meat? Where are the cucumbers? And where are the onions? And so they still complain against God. They were blind to the daily miracle. And that's just the, the grace that I'm praying for, for for myself today, to have eyes to see the daily miracle of God, the daily workings of God in my life, the daily providence, and just to, and some might say, well, it's kind of, maybe is it a, a bit not, is it a bit naive, or is it a bit kind of almost spiritually childish to walk around and say, oh my goodness, this is, you know, all so beautiful when it's, it's clearly, you know, evolution that has done this, or it's clearly just good fortune. I mean, if this place was too cold for people to live, nobody would live here, but this place is quite how would you say? Good for the human body. It's, uh, the good kind of conditions are good for life, so of course people live here. Yeah, we can reduce it all to those kind of things, but then it takes, it takes the providence of God out of it. And then we'll, I think, blind ourselves to the, work, the daily workings of God, the daily miracle. We're surrounded by miracles if we had eyes to see them. And so Lord, we ask you today, to help us to see the miracles that surround us right now. The people in our lives, and maybe the, the healings we have received, and I said before, like conversions that are even more important than, than physical healings. The gift of faith, the miracle of Holy Communion, the miracle of having your soul wiped clean in confession, all the, the daily miracles that surround us, that we might see them all with eyes of faith. We ask, Lord, that we might be your faithful disciples, living from the daily bread that you provide and witnessing to it in our lives. Amen.